Hello and welcome to SEO Academy. My name is Zeke. In this edition we're going to be talking about content strategy, content creation, and tips on how to do it, as well as the importance of quality content. Now you might ask why is this important? Why does this matter? Well, as it relates to SEO, it's actually a major factor in your ranking. Major search engines look into your word count, your use of multimedia, and also your presence on social media, um, shares, likes, pins, pluses, and it throws it all in to a big scoring machine which will get you ranked higher on major search engines. So, for example, there's an algorithm called Panda that Google rolled out in 2014. One of its creators is quoted as saying, content must bring additional value to the web meaning you need to bring something new to the table every time. Duplicate content is a big no-no. If you're copying parts of your website in another area or another website altogether, you actually stand to get penalized and perhaps blacklisted from Google as a result. This is borderline plagiarism and you want to avoid it at all costs. When you do this, now it's kind of a play on words. When you create content, you need to ask yourself, why does this matter? And implement it in creating your content and answering that question. Don't make it sound like a sales pitch at all. Tell a story that's relevant. Be relatable, be informative. Make sure that it's timely. Meaning if you're writing about an event that happened in 2005, that's quite not as timely as much and you're probably not going to garner that much interest on, across the web or on major search engines and social media. As you create your content, think about how does your company fit in. Create something new and compelling and original, but then get your company to fit into that picture and give a solution for example, give a solution in a way of making a call to action. You can do this either in a booking an appointment, get a free consultation, call now for quick service, put in your phone number in as many places as possible. Using photos and graphics is absolutely paramount. You want it to guide you along through the content, through the text, through your sales copy. Like I said, don't make it sound too salesy though. Now use photos and graphics that are on topic. Here you'll see a little graphic from one of our blogs on SEO Academy. Now albeit it's about web development, but you see a graphic that kind of touches upon that. It's about content management systems and how they work. This is a perfect example of staying on point and staying on topic and generating interest and visual appeal in doing them. Here is a bad example. It's something you shouldn't do. Is don't go with photos that are way too heavy. Here's an example of a photo that just simply takes way too long to load. Its dimensions are probably in the thousands. And these are the kind of photos that you should avoid uploading. The reason why is also major search engines actually score you on this. If your page takes way too long to load, you actually get docked ranking points. And on top of that, people generally just don't like it. I've been on many websites where it's just loading so slow and I'm like, this is just taking too much of my time. I hit back and I go over to the next result. That is why this is so important. Now, they say, a f excuse me. Next, we're going to talk about formatting. Now, I love ebooks, but I'm going to show an example of this as a bad, as bad practice. Now, I'm not knocking ebooks in any way, but here's an example of text that doesn't really guide you along. It doesn't really give you a topic. It doesn't let you know what it's talking about, and it doesn't have that general draw. Now, in doing research, on this very thing. I actually thought about medical journals as being like the bland, boring type of text that would serve as a perfect example on what not to do. However, 
Some of the top search results that I found of major medical journals is right here. Here's a good example. And it is actually a perfect example of a good practice. Here you see subheadings such as the introduction, patients and methods that guides a reader along through the content. On top of that, it has proper citations of good sources and it's done so as links as well. This prevents you from getting docked on the duplicate content front, actually. So this actually serves as, as a very vital practice when citing somebody else's work. They say that a photo tells a thousand words. Well, if that's the case, then a video tells a million words. On top of that, they are visually appealing and they add a whole nother dynamic of, of say that again, Let's start that again. They say that a photo tells a thousand words. If that's the case, then videos tell a million words. Here, you should implement your videos very strategically though when you're doing that in creating content. There are several reasons for this. It can actually serve to distract what you're actually trying to say. Or you can put too many videos and actually slow your page down. That could lead to a higher bounce rate. You don't want to do that. So make sure the videos that you put up are on topic. They are interesting. If anything, it's probably more, more ideal that you make your own videos. YouTube is a great way to distribute content. Here's the thing. Don't overdo it. Here you see two videos and I suspect that that page takes quite a while to load. Adding videos is very easy to do. You can simply hit the embed button or just hit a social media share button. You can place it anywhere in your original content for social media, for blogs, your homepage or landing page. Never underestimate the importance of the quality of the content that you put out. Remember, content is keen. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and find out more videos. Please subscribe and watch more of our SEO Academy videos and feel free to comment about any ideas you may have. And if you have any questions, also leave them in the comment box and we'll be glad to answer them. Bye-bye.